Welcome to another day in my tech life video. On this episode, we are going to be interviewing somebody who is very, very young. He's 22 years old, been in cybersecurity since the age of 17. This episode is going to be insane. You're going to learn so much about cybersecurity and how you can get into it without any degrees at all. So let's get into the episode. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. See so you got the car clean and stuff. Yes, Good yeah. Had, had to get the car clean, but forget my car. We gotta talk about you, what you're doing. So if people don't know, this is Kyle Lawyer. Yeah. He has been in cybersecurity since the age of how old? 17. 17. 17 years old. Yeah. Yes, he started cybersecurity at 17 years yeah. old, and now he is going car crazy. Him and all his friends. I'm yeah. sure you've seen him on YouTube. If you haven't seen him yet, make sure you subscribe to his channel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, just give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you got into tech. Like, what made you want to get into tech at such a young age? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I, I was, I got into tech because of my dad. Uh, me and my dad had a company way back then where we go into, where we would go into people's houses and uh, help them fix uh, printers, uh, computers, get malware off of computers and different things like that. So I, I was doing that since I was probably like 12, 13. Yeah. Uh, so I was introduced into, you know, tech from an early age from seeing him. He's always had a, he used to work help desk job and then he did that and then I uh, got into privilege access management, okay. um, cybersecurity. So I kind of got started through that way and then yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, did you go to school or no? No, so I went to one year of college. I went to university for one year, uh, dropped out, because I was like, it has to be a way to make money. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, okay, let me just figure out a way to make money. Um, and then I kind of just went that way. Got certified, got my certifications, and went for that. Bad, bad. So which certifications did you get? Because I know everybody wants to know, like, hey, like, there's so many certifications that they don't know which path to take, which ones you end up getting. Yeah, so I, my first industry certification I got was Network Plus. Mm. Um, and then I have three vendor certifications. So um, my certain vendor that I'm working with is CyberArk. So CyberArk, I have CyberArk Trustee, CyberArk Sentry, and CyberArk Defender. So I have okay. four certifications, and I'm working on my Google Cloud certification right now. Okay, dope, dope. So you got a bunch of certs, and that like changed everything for you. So, so um, you said you've been in cybersecurity since the age of 17, yeah. but you know what type of money are you making in the field? Because if people don't know who you are, a lot of people think that you're a scammer because you got like a Urus, you also have a Hellcat, and you're only what 22. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like what type of money are you making? Yeah, so around when I first started at 17, I got a help desk job. So I just mm. started at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I got a help desk job and I was making like 50K a year. Right. I, actually, I was at 45K. I became a supervisor in three months. Mm. They moved me up to like 52K mm -hmm. a year. Uh, then after that, I was able to get my first analyst position and okay. I was making 95 a year with bonuses and everything. So I think it came out to like 110 mm -hmm. a year. Um, and then from there, I was, I found out with identity access management, I could get multiple jobs. Okay. Um, so I had that one 10 a year job and I got two more. Um, one was at like 125 and the other one was at 140. Uh, okay, so I had cool. three jobs uh, last year, plus, uh, you know, different stocks, things like that. So I was making like 35, 40 K a month. Um, wow. From that. So that's how I'm able to afford all this. Wow. So you, know, wait, wait, talk about it publicly. Wait. So you said you were making 35, 40 K a month yeah. because you were stacking your different tech contracts. Exactly. Stacking different tech contracts got me that. That's crazy. That's crazy. So I want to prove people wrong that you're not a scammer. So later exactly. on in the video, we're going to pull up some pay stuff so people can see that. So exactly. it's no cap, right? Yep. So I guess people want to also know, like, how are you getting these jobs? How are you getting the multiple contracts? Like, how do they go about that? Uh, really, you just can't. So some companies, you can't let them know. Some companies don't care. Yeah. Uh, some do. Um, really, I just keep my mouth shut and go search for jobs. And plus, uh, I like to keep my, I keep my resume updated. 
Um, so I'm always getting hit from different recruiters on different job boards mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, so really anytime I get hit from a recruiter, I just go in, apply, you know, fill out the right to represent and right. send it back. Uh, so that's how I was doing it last year. I really wasn't even applying for them. They just came to me. Okay. It was at one point last year where I had four jobs. Wow. Uh, but it got too hectic, too many yeah. meetings, so I couldn't handle that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So. Wow. So you had four jobs last year yeah. and you basically just been job stacking like crazy. Yeah. And now, you know, basically you're sharing your story. You're letting people know kind of yeah. like, hey, you know, I got into cybersecurity at a very yeah. young age and this is how I did it. You could do the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, what is some advice that you can give to people that want to get into tech like right now? Uh, the best advice is... Like I always tell anybody that I don't know, if they come up to me and they ask me about it, is really to go out there and get certified first, like how you, even you mentioned in yeah. your videos. Best way, and it's the easiest way, is right. to get certified first, kind of have a plan for yourself, try to meet up with the right recruiters. Also, I had a good network of recruiters back then too, so that's how I was able to get those three or four jobs as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's really about who you know. I'm in different uh, networking groups in cybersecurity. Uh, so, using my network of different mentors and different cybersecurity professionals, I was able to find, you know, the right jobs, uh, who's applying, big companies that are applying, all of that. Stuff. Put on. Hey, hey put it on. Never try to take a little little brick. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna park my car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they look like they got a little bit of money. Uh, <laughs> so, what's your name is? My name is Kyle. Kyle, what yeah. you is, what you do, how old are you? I am 22, I do cybersecurity and that's my Lambo. You do cybersecurity? Yeah. Are you a scammer? No, I'm not, I don't You're scam. not a scammer? No, no. Um, <laughs> okay, so, um, We wait. was just talking about that in the video. No, we were just talking about in the video. Everybody say scam. he's scammed. Don't mind me. Like, so I make videos, I usually come out with like three, four videos a day, just giving out free advice, like things you can do um, to get into tech. So like different certifications, preparing for interviews, options if people want to go to school, everything. So, so. You still work now? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you, okay, so you still have to work a nine to five? Yeah, I mean, just because I want to. What you about to get? I'm about to get uh, pretty little tacos. Some okay. Burrito tacos? Yeah. I'm to get that. Okay. Awesome. I haven't. I haven't been here, so I'm trying out the mystery lemonade. But I was like, what, what flavor is this? What? Yeah. She told me, yeah. All right, man. So we definitely have to put the scammer allegations to arrest. So you said you just moved into your new apartment, right? Yeah, I did. All right. Yeah, so we're, we're definitely going to head over to your apartment because, one, I want to see it. You haven't shown YouTube or anybody yet? Nope, I haven't shown nobody yet. Okay, all right, bet. So we're going to head over there, and once we get there, we're going to check out some pay stubs and just check out the new spot because I want people to see how you're living. You know, you're 22 years old, and you're definitely, you know, doing your thing. So I want people to see that. What's up, Simone? How y'all doing? Hey, what's up, Kyle? What's going on? Y'all come in. Y'all gotta come in. Y'all gotta come okay, in. See, okay. the new, see the new penthouse. See the new penthouse. Okay. Oh. How you like Ooh, it? Look at this. Damn. This is, nice, like? this is nicer than my condo. I know. I, know. I love this. I love this. So, so look, so when we were, when we were together the other day, mm -hmm. you were telling me that you were about to move into this spot. And I had to come see it because I didn't want anybody to try and roast you like, oh, he lived with his parents yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. So we had to come here and see the yeah. new spot. So like, give us a little, you know, just a little tour real quick, just of, of yeah. your new place that you have here in Midtown. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So this is obviously the living room, kitchen area. And then I got my cool ass game room. It's still unfinished. Like I said, we just moved in here. So it's still not, everything is not where it needs to be, but as you can see, it's still kind of smooth right now. We got Call of Duty up and shit like that, stuff like that. <laughs> so you streaming here? You working here? Yeah, so I stream, uh, record my TikTok videos in here. I work in here, everything. So this is like my, my nice little office that I have now. Okay, okay. So you yeah. got an office. So what is this, like a three-bedroom? So this is a three-bedroom, two-bathroom. Yeah. And I think it's like 1,400 square feet around there. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen about that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, no, this is this is lit, this is lit. I appreciate so, it. So you got all of this off of your tech income. So you're an IAM engineer, which is identity access management if you weren't paying attention, right? Exactly. So you got all of this off of that? So you just off of one job or how many? So like I was telling you earlier in mm -hmm. this video a few days ago, yes, everything is came from me being an IAM engineer and I was working multiple contracts, so the most I've ever did was like four contracts. I tried to get five, but 
four is already overwhelming enough, too many meetings and a lot of work. But yeah, so every all of this is coming from my, I get really two to three contracts um, that, I was, that I've been doing. So that's where it came from. Yeah, so how did you find out about overemployment? I know like, you know, we went to dinner with your pop uh-huh. before. I think he was telling me like, he'd been doing overemployment for a long time. So like, yeah. how, is that how you found out about it? Yeah, so actually one of our good friends, I'm not gonna say his name just mm-hmm. in case, um, but one of, our, one of his good friends, when my dad first started in the IM realm, like probably like eight, nine years ago now, um, we he met somebody that was at his job. And during the time, you know, they were they were going in. And then obviously when COVID hit, he was like, hey, I found out a way to that I can get, you know, like more than one job. My dad was like, how? Yeah. And so, <laughs> so my dad. No, because COVID really, I mean, the pandemic, it changed everything. Because like yeah. being able to not have to go into the office mm-hmm. to being where you could work completely remotely from home. And then people just started going nuts with it, working two, three, three four, four tech jobs at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. Like I've seen some people on like overemployment or even on like the overemployment Reddit. Reddit. Yeah. Yo, I've seen some people where they were like, yeah, I'm making $750,000 a year. What? working multiple tech jobs or making, I'm making over a million dollars a year. Yeah. And what people don't realize is if you work multiple tech jobs like that and you make 750 or a million dollars a year, you don't got to do it for that long. You don't have to do it for that long <laughs> at all. Use that money, invest in other stuff. But there was one guy, it was interesting. I'm mm-hmm. glad you brought that up. It was one guy I saw in there. He made 1.5, he was making 1.5 million a year for the last two years and he was a software engineer. Mm-hmm. So, and he, he was working five and he said, really th- like, throughout the weeks it like kind of transitioned where like only like two job, two or three jobs a week would mm-hmm. actually be like work to actually do. But the other ones he was just chilling and joining yeah. meetings and just kind of just really just chilling. So it was yeah. kind of interesting to see. But yeah, so we discovered that back right when, right when COVID hit uh, that we can do. Uh, multiple and then he kind of told me from there so I worked I had my first IM job was an analyst job I had that for six months and then after that I was able to find an engineer job so I had that analyst and engineer job at the same time and then I was able to work my way up and get the you know the next two jobs from there and I did like a sell point uh, admin job and then the other one was a cyber arc engineer job uh, okay. so those are my four uh, jobs that I had. Yeah. Dang, so you have four tech jobs at the same time. So yeah. even though you have four tech jobs at the same time, I know you do more than just working in tech. So like, what else do you do with your tech money? Like, what else do you do on the side? Yeah, so that's a good question. So I know everybody's thing is always real estate, but my mind is I'm trying to focus on getting franchises, laundromats, and convenience stores, gas stations. I met a, a millionaire a while ago, back when I was a kid. Um, and he was saying that people are always trying to create something new mm-hmm. and not using things that are already pre-existing that are already proven to work and make right. money. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of on that journey. So I'll, I'll have like a laundromat or a franchise next year. I'm kind of in between which one I want to choose. But I also do have a, a mentorship that teaches people how to get into IAM and uh, PAM, which is Privileged Access Management. Okay. Um, so that's what I do as well. Now, and that's kind of taken off a lot, way more yeah. than I expected now. So I'm able to, you know, drop down on my contracts now because that dealing with my mentorship is kind of like getting overwhelming just yeah. trying to work jobs and do that so I'm able to kind of go full time with that and focus on my other investments now so right that's what but I'm you doing. also on YouTube too yeah. so I'll talk YouTube, about the YouTube channel yeah so I, YouTube and I stream but my YouTube channel yeah. is kind of like cars I know as y'all see I have the Lamborghini I also have a Hellcat Red Eye jailbreak as well we might have to show them that later on in the mm. video um, but so it's mostly cars like lifestyle vlogs and I also stream uh, once a week, I do like a free Q&A for cybersecurity, how to get into IAM, how to get into PAM. Um, and then I also just play Call of Duty on there as well throughout the week. So I do that, like do the Q&A every Monday. And then other than that, I just stream throughout the week whenever I pretty much feel like mostly like Tuesday to Thursday or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough to stream. I, yeah, it's I was tough. supposed to be streaming. I got a whole streaming computer. I haven't streamed in maybe like eight, nine months. So. Yeah, I was going to say, you have streamed a little minute. <laughs> it's been a minute since Fortnite. I streamed. Yeah, yeah, I was streaming Fortnite and stuff. But yeah. but let's get back to the IAM stuff. So, like, yeah. what's your typical day-to-day as an IAM engineer? So, yeah, so that's a good question. Typical day-to-day was, mm-hmm. like, kind of like, you know, dealing with tickets. We were uh, very ticket heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, onboarding new users, offboarding accounts, uh, creating safes, onboarding new users into those safes, um, creating groups, mm-hmm. uh, what else? That was the bulk of my work, but I would say um, right 
I guess currently what we're working on right now is we're onboarding Cellpoint as well. Mm -hmm. So we're in meetings trying to get Cellpoint onboarded. Um, now we have to get professional services uh, to get Cellpoint onboarded. So that's kind of interesting right now. But um, really, whatever task we're assigned during the week is kind of how it is. When we first started, when I first started that specific contract last year as I am engineer, my first one, um, we just got CyberArk onboarded, which is a certain framework, uh, if you guys don't know. Um, and so we kind of had to figure out what way we wanted CyberArk to run. Mm. Um, so after after we did that and got that situated, we're now we're on a pro in process of getting CellPoint uh, implemented. So okay. and we're doing a lot of good work. Yeah. So I mean, your your day to day is kind of <clears throat> to me it kind of seems similar to like sysadmin work where it's like you know you got your tasks that you got to do you got yeah. your you know users and groups that you have to create password exactly. management all those things so yeah. it's mostly like task based so it's it not is. like yeah. something where oh something's going down so you got to be available 24 yeah. 7 it's more like you have tasks to get done mm -hmm. you have uh whatever needs to be done to implement the iam you exactly. know whatever type of solution you all have right yeah so it's, it's pretty much task driven so each week at the beginning of the week, we would meet what tasks need to be done, and then we complete those tasks throughout the week. Uh, I think one of the, actually the last projects I was working on as well was we had like 7,000 accounts. Mm. Um, some of them had owners, some of them didn't, so we had to email all those people with, uh, you know, that were in CyberArk that were had owners and see what they were doing with those accounts before we, you know, offboard them, whatever. Um, but it's usually like random tasks like that, I would say, that we had to, that we had to do. It was 7,000 service accounts, sorry. Um, but just little stuff like that that we had to do and keep, you know, keep cyber working up and up. So. Okay. All right. So, you know, I, I, we're here at the crib. Everybody keeps saying that Cal, since Cal has a urus and a jailbreak hellcat, mm -hmm. that there's no way that you're living in places like this. My, by the way, by the way, how much does this place cost? Like, as you can see, it's floor to ceiling windows everywhere in here. He says yeah. three bedroom, two bath, 1,400 square feet. Like, how much are you paying a month for this place? So the base rent is 44.84 a month. Mm. Um, but after after everything, I think I'm paying like forty seven, forty eight hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. That's what Wi Fi, everything, light bill, everything, gas, right. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you paying that? You got the years. You also have um, your Hellcat as well. So yeah. it's like you know, people they keep saying if the, if you've seen him on social media before, everybody in the comments like, there's no way he's working in tech. He got to be scamming. He got to be doing something else. So like you know, what can you show us or show the people? that you have to like prove that you actually are working in tech and working as an IM engineer? I think the biggest way to shut people up is to either show them a bank statement or pay stub. So that's usually what I typically do. People don't trust the bank statement, so I right. show them a pay stub. Oh, okay. So here is, as y'all can see, so at this particular contract, one of my most recent ones, I was making $52.80 an hour. Here's my pay. And as you can see, the federal then this was my net pay after taxes every other week. There y'all go. It is ADP, as y'all can see on here. The show ADP the mobile world, app. ADP I'm mobile say, app. Let's, let's go right here so y'all don't think we cap. ADP mobile app. Good afternoon, Kyle. And then you can see pay. And then so this is all the pay right here, as y'all can see. All right, well. I guess that puts it into it. That puts it into all of that, so we don't have to hear that no more. All right, so what you got? What you got to tell them? You gonna tell them? But yeah, now we now we gotta wrap it up. We're gonna show y'all both the cars. I haven't even shown Simone the Hellcat yet, so this is Simone's first time seeing the Hellcat. So you know we'll turn it on, let y'all see it. So if you want to become an IAM engineer, make sure you follow Kyle Lawyer. He is on TikTok, Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, he's also streaming on Twitch, where he has like free uh, classes basically that he does live on Twitch. So go in and watch his videos with him. And then also see his YouTube so you can kind of like see how he's living and learn more from him. Kakao is very young, very successful. Um, he has a great, great career ahead of him. And really, it's a shout out to your pops, right, for putting exactly. you on with, yeah. with the overemployment. So yeah. I think this was a great episode. So make sure you come back and watch the rest of the videos of a Day in My Tech Life series. I'm always gonna be highlighting black tech professionals and black tech founders. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm gonna see you on the next one.